Good morning, everyone. We're glad you're with us for morning prayer at All Saints Lutheran Church. My name is Rick Bradley. Good morning. I'm Gordon Schonsenbach. We'll follow the order of morning prayer, which will include a reading from a psalm and two lessons from scripture. And that will be followed by silence uh, for reflection on the lessons and conclude with prayers for the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is the 119th Psalm. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings. I will not be put to shame, for I delight in your commands because I love them. I reach out for your commands, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. First lesson is from Deuteronomy. Now I, Moses, had stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights, as I did the first time. And the Lord listened to me at this time also. It was not his will to destroy you. Go, the Lord said to me, and lead your people on their way, so that they may enter and possess the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. And now Israel does what the Lord God will ask of that you, but to fear, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Let the Lord set his effect, and yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them. He chose them, their descendants above all nations, as it is today. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff necked any longer. For the Lord your God is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the God, great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and forgives the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors who went down into Egypt were 70 in all, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. Second lesson comes from the second chapter of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, 
but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish people, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, not by faith alone. In the same way, it was not Rehab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without deeds is dead. Word of the Lord. Now observe moments of silence.
thoughts, questions? Well, James raises a lot of questions. Oh, yes. I, I, uh, I think an introduction to James, a good introduction to James, is Deuteronomy. And I, for this reason, I like what Moses does. He sets out their praise and obedience to God. And then he sets the stage for them in a sense. God does this when he talks about God defends the fatherless, the widows, take care of aliens who come in your country and so on. And God does this. And I think in a sense, if, if you have the right heart, you will follow God and do the same thing. And that's, that's a, an extension of faith in, in, in God. Yeah. Jump just a little, uh, no more. I think James, in a sense, sort of said the same thing in a very direct way. But I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I th and I think in in uh, Deuteronomy, the stage is set. Although maybe the Old Testament people didn't understand that, uh, for the outreach of God's love yeah. for all people. Because there, there is that tucked away in that verse of these are the things God wants us to do: uh, fear God, be obedient, love God, serve the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul. Stop being so stubborn. And then tucked away after that, is God shows no partiality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God's steadfast love which is the first verse of, of the psalm, that set fast love is for everybody. And I think what James is trying to get at is how do you show that love? Yeah. How, not so, much, not, not so much by what you say, but by what you do. Um, and he, he uh, it, it, it's so powerful. I will show you my faith by what I do. Yeah. It sort, of, sort of says there, in a way, said that the Christian faith is, is for you individually, and we look at that. So, but actually the Christian faith is for you to extend elsewhere to the people around you. Right. And he's saying, how do you do that? And that's through your behavior. You can talk to them all you want about what you believe, and what you do. He, he's going to say they look at what you do, not always what you say. Right. One of the reasons uh, uh, for people who grew up in religious communities to leave those communities and become the uh, that group which is, which define themselves as being. Uh, spiritual but not religious. Uh, one of the reasons they leave is because they see Christians not doing what Jesus told them to do. Uh, and that has been a problem in the church from the very beginning. And obviously it was a problem that James had to confront. We, yes. I think when we talk about Christians, Christians as a group or as individuals, the movement toward faith, as Paul talks about, to which we're justified, we're justified by faith, is not an instant. It's a growing thing in a human being. And therefore, there are times when the Christian behaves in an unchristian like manner, and so on. And how do we. <laughs> result of that thing is just to continue to do less of that, should we say, in a sense, and become more obedient to the Lord. And that's what they asked in the Old Testament. And Paul, James and Paul and others asked the same thing in the, in the New Testament. Obedience to the word of Christ. Right. You know, I think the, the struggle that we've faced in the, the church over the years is where do we put where do we put the focus there are those who say the primary responsibility 
of the church is to preach the gospel and save souls, mm -hmm. as though the soul was somehow not connected to the body. Yeah. Yeah. And there are others who have said, we gotta, we got to attend to people's physical needs. And then we can, then we can talk about uh, salvation and saving souls and so forth. And I don't think it's it's a question of one or the other. It's a both and. Yeah. Depending on the needs of the people you're working with. Uh, but uh, Deuteronomy lays out. Here's the things God wants you to do, and James is saying, yeah. let's revisit that. It's a challenge, isn't it, for those who are uh, who are caregivers and those who've gone out to help individuals make their lives better in every way you do it. Yeah. In other way, that it's continuous; it never ends. I think that Mother Teresa faced that. She, it wasn't ending. She would do all these things, and there was still more to do. Oh. And it becomes. It wears on the human being, yeah. and it wears on their faith. That they sometimes don't see the end of their faith all the time because it's still there. Yeah. And you said you'll always have the poor. <laughs> yeah. And that's not, that's not nice to remember, but I think for people who really put their lives out there as caregivers, mm -hmm. that's a necessary yeah. thing for them to understand. That never ends. Might be, it might be worthwhile to, uh, if, if you have time today and want to reflect on these lessons a little bit more, to think about the words of uh, Pope Francis, uh, who said, uh, preach the gospel wherever you go. Use your words only when absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Preach the gospel wherever you are using your words only when you absolutely have to. So that's something to think about for today. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let us pray. Loving God, you sent your Holy Spirit to transform our fear into hope. Where our fear is weak, our faith is weak, draw us closer to you and strengthen our faith during the Pentecost season. Make us hopeful, willing witnesses to your love for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the feet of those who bring good news, friendship, comfort, food, shelter, and medicine for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray today, Lord, for all who suffer in any way, those in poverty, those who are ill, those facing marital issues or medical issues, those with special needs, those who feel unloved, and all others in need of your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer you carry us tenderly we pray for those walking through the dark valleys of life and those overwhelmed by fear or grief or suffering of any kind we especially pray today today for those listed in our bulletin and for all others we name out loud or silently now lord in your mercy hear our prayer we give thanks that you accept our vulnerability, our wounds, our pain, and all of our rough edges. In some way, you have loved and accepted us. May we reach out with compassion and understanding so that others may also experience the power of your love at work in the darkest corners of their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We know that your heart is breaking for children who have been forcibly separated from their parents, as together they sought refuge in our country. Draw them near to you and protect these families. Comfort them with the hope of a joyful reunion. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. We invite your intercessions. We commend all these people and concerns to you and offer thanksgiving, trusting that what we have left unsaid, your holy wisdom can on earth. In the name of the one who came among us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be, be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. We hope to see you again soon. God bless.